I don't think he's gonna be done for a while. I think he's done with the, the grass cutting. So you wanna flush your power steering fluid at home. Well, you came to the right place because today I'm gonna to show how you can do that exact job at home, no problem, and save yourself some money in the process. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage. And today we got another installment of maintenance that you can do it yourself. Let's take a look what's on the board behind us. This is all you are going to need to get this job performed. As you can see, very little amount of tools. And yes, you read that right. That is what Toyota recommends you use on your power steering. And we'll touch that subject a little more in detail later. But let me show you guys what I'll be using here. Again, just regular pair of pliers. You might want to use some gloves. Uh, I found these to block off the one line. You'll see in a second why. Never mind that. I brought this out just to show you as an example why a lot of the times this might not work. Uh, mainly because this is so large that it will not fit inside the reservoir. So the method that I'm going to show you is a lot better than this. And besides, um, you want to get more fluid than this would be uh, allowing you to. So we're going to put that aside. I always like to use a funnel because I like to keep the messes to a minimum. This is something new I'm trying, so I'm not going to focus on this too much. We'll touch about that a little later. But this is the fluid in question. This is what I'm going to use. As you can see, it is indeed automatic transmission. But that is your keyword, Dexron 2 or three, excuse me, and the same thing goes over there. But if you read, what does it say right there? Power steering, just for the non-believers. But without any further ado, I wanna go over the tool that we did just by, and this is gonna make our life very easy. This fluid extractor, as I'll show you in a second, step by step, is gonna make this process a breeze. First things first, you grab yourself a rag, something that you don't want to use again, so that you can cover this area very well to prevent any fluid from uh, spilling all over your engine bay. Next step, very simple. Let's remove our cap and place it to the side. And now we're gonna begin by removing as much fluid from the reservoir as possible with the pump. As you can see, this tube is perfect size for the job. So let's go ahead and start pumping it. As you can see, it's already doing its thing. And before you know it, it will be empty. So just keep doing it, moving the tube about and try to get as much as you possibly can. Once your reservoir is empty, you grab yourself a pair of pliers and the very top hose, which is your return, you're gonna remove the clamp, work it down. Once the clamp is down, you then, they usually are pretty easy to remove. Use a twisting motion and pulling down you gotta go ahead and remove your return line, like so. Once you've done that, what you wanna do is cap the return line with something that looks similar to that. There's all sorts of variations you can do this job. Whichever one you find suitable, go ahead and do that. And once you're done capping your return uh, inlet of the reservoir, what you want to do is, see if I can do this without covering it too much, you grab your hose once more from your extraction pump and insert it in to the line, like so. Now, let's go ahead and fill this up with the new fluid.
get yourself a funnel and as you can see i am using automatic transmission fluid as recommended by toyota so the concept here is guys that as the fluid travels through the system we suck it out this way and technically we should be able to tell once the fluid starts coming out at a nice clean stream out this uh, extraction uh, hose as you can see i overfilled it on purpose because what we're going to do is try to extract as much of this fluid as possible and it will work itself out this hose as you can see coming out this way going down that way Again, this is one of those things, guys. I'm using two quarts. Please feel free to use as many quarts as you feel that you need, but I feel that two quarts is more than enough fluid to flush this entire system, as it only takes about a quart in the entire system. As you guys can see, I've been at this for a little while, and the fluid is now returning back in this beautiful red color as you see here which is a clear indication that you have now removed most if not all of your old fluid out of the system now there's two ways to go about the next step first one you leave this reservoir empty you can then take the plug out and reconnect your hose or you can fill it up halfway take the plug out and cover it with your finger and insert the hose in there obviously without spilling as much fluid as possible what i am going to do because i'm not that good at uh you know these situations where a spill like this is involved i'm going to go ahead and leave it empty and connect my hose to the return outlet of the reservoir as you can see being that the reservoir is empty we just take the plug out reinstall our return hose and then, of course, grab our pair of pliers and reinstall the clamp back in its original spot. As you guys can see, this is pretty easy to do. And I have absolutely 100% confidence that you guys can accomplish this very easily on an afternoon I put it exactly where I found it it's just the way I like to do it and now of course you grab your leftover fluid brand new fluid of course and you fill it back up and the key here is to fill it back up based on the line to the left of the reservoir which is the cold fill and what you want to do is you want to bring it to the max and once you've done that now I'm going to show you how to bleed it. As you guys can see, to the left of your reservoir, you have a little low and minimum, and then another. This is hot, this is cold. I filled it up to the top on the cold side. Chances are I'm going to need some more, but let's go ahead. I like to do this with the reservoir closed because it prevents from any overspilling as you turn the steering wheel. But let's go ahead, start this car up, and I'll show you exactly what it's going to take to get this hair out of the system. So, as you guys can see, I'm even doing mine a little prematurely, but that's definitely a telltale sign when you should do it. 30,000 miles is a good time. Let's just see if the fluid level has dropped at all. You don't want to run the stuff dry. As you can see, it dropped ever so slightly. Let's get a little closer there. So let's bring the level up. Once you've done so, let's go ahead and try that again. This time around, we're going to turn the steering wheel clockwise and counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and start the car. And 
just like that. You're going to bring it to fill full clock, one side, the other side, and you want to repeat this process. I want to say at least four times. Bring it back to center and turn it off. Let's check the level, shall we? It might be a little lower, but as you can see, let's zoom in. We're actually, what it looks like, good. It's a little overfilled, but what you wanna do now is clearly take the car for a drive, bring it back in and check your level. Now that I just got back from the test drive, let's take a look again at the fluid. Would you look at that? That is perfect. As you can see, it's nice and bright and red as it should be. Um, I am, of course, gonna give you guys a sample of the old versus new so you guys can see the contrast. But just so you have an idea, this is all I got out. It's not a whole lot and you get the job done at home. And you too can do a power steering flush Absolutely no problem. I do wanna, of course, show you guys a little comparison here. Now, mind you, my car might not be the perfect example for the job, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't, by all means, change your fluid. Obviously, you care to guess which side is the old, which side is the new, I think you guys get it from this small comparison. But there you have it. Power steering fluid flushed at 30,000. Drop a comment down below if you find this video to be very easy to follow. Did you like this method of filming? If so, let me know in the comments down below. So as you guys can see, transmission fluid is the correct fluid to do this particular flush. There will be a lot of controversy on this one because you're going to have the guys that are going to tell you, oh, but my car came with yellowish, which is more of a clear yellow toned uh, fluid in it. Yeah, it did. Toyota did that on purpose. Toyota, Toyota also threw everybody a curveball because they wanted a car to present a certain way. So what they do is use dyes. Hmm. Did I just reveal the way that's done? Guys, think about royal purple. What color is oil? what color is royal purple. It's kind of the same concept. They just didn't want to sell you the car with red fluid in that container. So therefore looks a little more presentable, I suppose. I really could be wrong on this one, but I can assure you one thing. If Toyota is telling me to put automatic transmission in my power steering fluid system, take a wild guess what I'm going to do. I am going to do what they tell me. Now you're probably saying, why did you not use Toyota fluid guys i'm here to teach you guys how you can save some money that fluid is almost twice the price of this one as you guys can see this did the job perfectly fine uh, this one on the other end i'm not familiar with this i'm going to take some of that fluid out of the reservoir and top it off with this and i will let you guys know in the comment section how that goes but in the meantime any other suggestions you guys want to uh, chime in and give us more information on your end please feel free to drop it in the comments down below. As always, I would very much appreciate if you could like this video. And if you haven't done so, don't forget to subscribe. And as always, guys, I will catch you guys on the next one. And as a bonus, guys, as always, I think I share something with you guys that definitely is worth sharing. I am feeling very nostalgic. And you might wonder why. Well because there she is. Let me turn this camera around. And what we're looking at is a 2015 trail, uh, the base model, as well as I had with the cloth seats. Not too crazy about these side steps, but this one's actually gonna be wholesale. For what I understand, it has a really noisy differential. And that's about it, I believe. I do not know the exact mileage on this one but for what i understand it's got a lot of miles so they just don't want to keep it so expect to see this guy at an auction near you but yeah she's a beauty man barcelona red guys vote down below 
You gonna go for the red or are you gonna go for the army green? Boy, I tell you, I'm still torn till this day because this is a color that I never really chose as a first option and it has grown on me over the years. Um, but yeah, there she is. Brings back a lot of good memories. Thank you for watching guys. So what do you know guys? I was actually wrong. Uh, I got some good news. An update literally right before I was going to release this video. It turns out we are saving this uh, full runner after all. Check it out. And upon closer inspection, as you can see, these brakes were completely shot. They were taken down almost to the metal in the front. And as you can see in the rear here, there is no pad on the outside. And this caliber is now trash. So I clearly had the cars mixed up, but not to worry because what we did is we brought her back to life. So the forerunner does live to see another day, and that does put a smile on my face. I am very happy to report that she's not getting uh, wholesaled after all, she's not going to some random auction. We did sort her out, got some fresh tires, sorted out the brakes overall. And how cool is this? Check out the mileage on this bad boy. She's got low mileage too. This is definitely, definitely gonna make a very nice car for somebody. So if you're interested, come check it out. Barcelona Red will be available soon. But now is definitely time to go guys. Once again, thank you for watching.